Okay, so let's go ahead and build these styles for our modal window. We're purely going to focus on the styling part now. At least then we know that we've got the elements that we need to be able to show the modal window. It's a good idea to have these ready before you even start writing any JavaScript at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is just generate a document layout here. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it's probably good practice to do so. And I'm just going to set the title here to modal. Um, inside of the body, what I want to do is just generate, as I said before, quite a bit of content on the page just to see how this interacts as we scroll down. So let's go ahead and generate, say, 50 paragraphs, and let's put some lorem ipsum inside of here. I'm using a plugin called Emmet to generate everything you can see, but you can just write this out by hand if you want with your favorite lorem ipsum generator, whatever. So now that we've got that content on the page, we should see something like this, where we can just scroll up and down. Pretty straightforward. So inside of the body then, I'm going to create a couple of elements that will be the markup for our modal window. And then we can apply the classes to this, style it up as we need. But the first thing I want to do is create a new folder with our CSS file in. So let's create a file called global.css and the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reset the body styles and by reset all I mean is just change the margin to zero and this just means that um, when we come to do the shading in the background we don't get any margin issues from the body pushing this away it, it won't look great if you don't do this so the next thing I'm going to do which again isn't really required but I'm going to create a container class this is just going to be uh, where all of my content on the page is going to be wrapped in. If you're using some kind of grid system or other framework, then this will probably be done for you. But in this case, I'm just going to say that I want lots of content within a container, and that's just going to sort out the uh, padding for me. So let's go ahead and take what we generated and place that inside of this container. And let's just go ahead and indent this like so there we go so now if we return to global.css we know that we've got padding of 20 so this shouldn't look too much different there we go so we've got our uh, container with its padding while we're here let's go ahead and bring up our uh, development tools just so we can play around with styles here uh, as well as have the console down here for when we get to the javascript part and you can also switch the console tab here so what I want to do now then is actually generate the modal window and we'll be doing this with JavaScript uh, with our jQuery plugin. But for now, let's create a modal window div and this is going to contain some content. So let's just type content and we'll leave it at that. So over in global.css then we want to start styling up our modal window. This isn't going to be anything special, but the beauty about this plugin is that you can define which class you want. And obviously, if you are writing the styles along, you can just go ahead and change these to whatever you want. It, you know, the, the plugin will work the same. So for the modal window, then we want a position of either fixed or absolute. If you want this fixed to the page as you scroll up and down, then choose position fixed. All this means is that the um, content here will stay exactly in the same position. Uh, let's not forget to link in our style sheet. So let's go ahead and link this in, css slash global.css. And you'll see now that that now has a fixed position if we scroll down. Oh, and the padding has just taken place. I forgot that we hadn't included our style sheet. So that's now a fixed position. So if you want your modal window to do that, you can do so. Um, OK, so I'm going to choose absolute for now because um, if you do want to pull in lots of content into your modal window, your users might not be able to scroll down and see the content. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want this to be 50% from the left. We can use the left, top, bottom, right properties here. I also want it to be 50 pixels from the top. And I also want the width of this to be 60%. So that's basically going to allow me to uh, have it at a sort of percentage width on the page. And then we'll apply some padding. We'll give this a background as well. And now what we want to do is actually center it in the page. Left of 50% isn't going to center this. You'll see that it does sort of offset it. And you can see that the white area there is where the modal is actually sitting. We could actually give this a border of 
of say black of one pixel just to see where that's sitting uh, we'll remove that in a moment so um, for this then we're going to use the transform CSS property and we're going to use a translate that basically move this on the x-axis minus 50% and on the y-axis we'll leave that at zero so what this is going to do then is actually center that modal window now so now that we've got a central modal window I'm just going to add a WebKit vendor prefix for this for any browsers that are a little bit out of date um, you shouldn't really use like uh, need Mozilla and, and uh, Microsoft etc and Opera for this but um, go ahead and check out caniuse.com just to see uh, which vendor pre prefixes are required if you do want to support browsers uh, going back in versions so let's add a couple of more uh, CSS properties just to make this look a little bit nicer I'm actually going to remove the border now I'm just going to update this CSS property to background color rather than background and let's go ahead and give this a border radius and let's say five pixels and let's give this a box shadow as well so we're going to say we want this three pixels and three pixels offset from the x and y axis five pixels spread and we'll use rgba which is basically rgb values with an alpha channel and we'll say 0.2 or we can make it a little bit darker and say 0.5 so that's now going to give us that shadow so we've now got our modal window don't worry about the fact that this blends in a little bit because we're going to have the shade in the background eventually and that will uh, cause this to stand out a little bit more so now that we've got our modal window sorted let's go ahead and create the modal shade element and this is basically going to be the shade that we see in the background so we'll go ahead and create a new element down here called modal shade and again you won't have to do this when you actually use your plugin it will all be generated with our uh, jQuery plugin we don't won't actually need to write this markup and we don't need any uh, text in here at all so we can just leave that on one line so the modal shade then is basically going to have a position of fixed doesn't need to be absolute it's not going to look great it's obviously going to have a height of 100% and it's going to have a width of 100% as well and we also want a background color on this and we want RGBA again with 000 for black and then say a 0 0.7 so let's take a look at what this looks like there we go you may have noticed now that we've got this problem where the shade is actually taking over the modal window there's a couple of ways we can rectify this and we're going to do this within our plugin so that the uh, modal window is generated after the shade and in this case you'll see that that actually comes forward but you can go ahead and you can use a Z index like so to define where you want this to sit. So you could, for example, say you want the Z index of the shade of one and you could then say you want the Z index of the actual modal window at two. And then it wouldn't matter if you had the modal window in the markup order above this it would still render the same result so there's a couple of options there but again I'll leave that up to you to style this as you want so we've got our shade we've got our modal window we know that these work just a quick one if you do want this to be a fixed position like I said you can use fixed and this is basically what it looks like so you can decide how you want this to look okay so now we need a close button that is going to sit within this area here so this is basically going to be an anchor so inside of the modal window we're going to generate an anchor and this is going to have some text in it and this is going to have a class we'll call this modal close let's head over to our styles here and we'll go ahead and generate We'll create the markup for this we'll call this modal close as we did with the class name so this is going to have an absolute position it's going to sit at the top at 10 pixels coming down and at the right it's going to come off 10 pixels as well so that gives us the following we've got a little close button there that we can click so that was pretty straightforward we've now generated all of the styling that we need for this and we can go on to control this with our jQuery plugin like I said, we're going to be generating all of this markup here with our plugin. So you can get rid of this for now. 
and forget about it until you write your jQuery plugin.